Okay, hello. This is a continuation of my summary of how the United States is uh, starting a new Cold War with Russia. And we're focusing upon the Industrial Revolution, all right? And we're uh, 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 trying to examine how the Industrial Revolution impacted upon how wealth and money, great fortunes are made off of warfare. And that's going to go uh, a great way in explaining why the U.S. is starting a new Cold War. All right. So today's specific focus is on the first stage of the Industrial Revolution, which was machine manufacture of textiles. All right. Specifically, cotton textiles. And the rate limiting step in the whole process was removing seeds from the raw cotton. And this was unleashed by the cotton gin machine. Uh, which hit the streets in 1793. Now, back then, you know, well, of course, everyone needs clothes, and back then, clothes were very expensive because they're handmade. So, machine production reduced the price on clothes, but it greatly increased the volume, so it increased profits. Now, uh, those who had machines, machine producers, killed off their competition because they could produce things cheaper, sell it for cheaper. Uh, and drive out any competition from the market. Example is United Kingdom or Great Britain, and they dominated the cotton textile industry early on, right? And this was a key factor in the U.S. Civil War. I'll explain how in a, in a little bit. So lastly, machines uh, that were powered by uh, wind, water, or uh, steam required a factory setting, right? As opposed to the cottage industry where you have like a single artisan working out of his home with one machine that he either uh, uh, leases or was lent to him or he uh, owns, right? right? Well, he can't afford uh, to, to get all the fancy, expensive power equipment for just one machine, right? You need, uh, the power systems were so expensive that you got to uh, have multiple sh machines powered by that power system to make it financially feasible, right? So that required factories. All right, so this is a little bit more in depth, all right? The first stage of the Industrial Revolution was machine manufacture of cotton textiles, especially machines that were powered by wind, water, or steam, all right? Now, in this process, the rate limiting step was the removal of seeds from raw cotton, uh, which was manpower intensive and slow. Uh, this was solved by the invention of another machine called the cotton gym, invented by a guy named Eli Whitney. And I think he patented that in 1793, as I recall, and it actually hit the market in 1793. So that's when it had economic impact, when it hit the market. All right, so this was not the first machine. It was like one of the latter machines, all right? Uh, 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 early machines included things like the fly shuttle, invented uh, earlier in 1733, followed by the spinning jenny, 1764, followed by a water-powered machine called the water frame, invented in 1769, and then you had a steam-powered power loom. Right, you see in this case how you have these multiple wheels, all powered by the by the one steam engine, all driving multiple machines. Right, that made it feasible. You could drive. You couldn't have a machine just drive one. You couldn't have a steam engine drive just one machine because that one it would cost too much to make that steam engine. Right, it's not financially feasible. Hope, hope that hope you understand that. So now the cotton gin was the rate limiting step. This was the this is what slowed the whole process down. Once you got the cotton gym to pull out those seeds, that unleashed the cotton textile industries. So the invention of the cotton gin caused, one, the cotton textile industry to take off. Two, increased demand for slaves in the U.S. South. Three, set the U.S. Southern economy on course toward dependency on export of a primary product, which was raw cotton with the consequence of Dutch disease obstruction of industrial development. And that was the key reason why the southern economy never developed industries 
and was dirt poor, except for the few super rich slave plantation owners. Four, it established southern colonial like economic dependence upon Great Britain, somewhat like a throwback to pre revolutionary war times. Five, created the divergence between the economies of the U.S. North and the U.S. South that led to the Civil War. And that was a key driving force towards war. It was not slavery. Like we're told in history books. Right? In fact, the North did everything they could. They bent over backwards to guarantee and protect slavery. They are trying to appease the South to avoid war. So they guaranteed perpetual slavery with the Corn Amendment. Now people are going to say, well, it was never ratified. Well, it, was, it passed both houses. Both, you know, both House and Senate. And it was on the way to be ratified, but then the Civil War started first. And it was a, it was gear, it was a, it was shooing to be ratified because they all wanted to avoid war. They're going to throw slaves under the bus to avoid war. In a heartbeat. No sweat. Right? Offered to admit New Mexico, so they also offered to admit New Mexico territory as a slave state. The House did, and uh, uh, both bodies passed the Crittenden and Johnson resolution, which guaranteed that the Civil War would not be fought to free the slaves. The slaves would not be free as a result of the Civil War. Right. All right. So back then, handmade clothes were a poor commodity at that time because they were, of course, expensive, being handmade. And they're, they're in demand because everyone needed clothes. Machine production greatly reduced price, which greatly increased and also greatly increased production volumes. Those who had machines used their production advantage to drive others out of the market. All right. For example, Great Britain, UK, dominated the textile market with their advantages in steam-powered textile machines. I mean, they led the world in steam power systems and coal mining and so forth. Uh, their advantages in, in the factory system, their better supply chains, uh, their well-established export markets, especially within the autarkic colonial empire. And one example is India was a huge uh, market for cotton textiles. Uh, naval control of shipping lanes, right? They had the largest uh, naval force. And they had a large a merchant fleet, uh, which is something the U.S. lacked, you know, throughout the 19th century. U.K. used these advantages to underprice any potential competition from uh, entering the market, keeping them out of the market. All right. Example is USA. Another example is Germany, but also any other, you know, uh, nation that was competing like France and so forth. Uh, now, U.S. entrepreneurs in the North wanting to make money, right, and knowing that the big money, the real money was derived from value added, not by selling raw materials. That was just a pittance compared to uh, what you can make from value added, uh, finished products, manufactured goods. And these guys sought to establish manufacturing enterprises, but with British domination, that was only possible with the help of uh, from protective tariffs, uh, you know, passed by in U.S. law. The protective tariffs, however, like like the moral tariff, would destroy the balance of trade in the southern cotton economy, obstructing currency recycling, which would whack currency values that would devastate southern cotton exports, upon which the southern economy was based. And this was a fundamental cause of the Civil War. This was a key cause of the Civil War. Right? Now, I know some may argue, well, you know, uh, much of the Southern uh, uh, trade with uh, uh, Great Britain was not in any currency, but was within, you know, balance sheets, credits and debits. Right? That may be true, but it doesn't matter because credits and debits are money no less than paper currency, no less than metal coins, it do, you know, or electronic currency. It's all the same thing, right? Money is fundamentally an IOU, right? It's a promissory note. That's what money is. That's the essence of money. 
right? Balance sheets are no, no less an IOU. In fact, the first monetary system, the first monetary economies were based out of uh, Mesopotamia, you know? And, uh, you know, 5,000 years ago, uh, it was, um, you know, written on clay tablets, debits and credits, written on clay tablets in cuneiform. And that established the first monetary economies, which allowed for, you know, large scale uh, control of collective resources, which was a, when a huge, which, which played a huge role in making the great empires possible, right? And I believe that's a key reason why Mesopotamia was the first great civilization, right? Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. So lastly, uh, power machines required factory settings, which caused the demise of the cotton industry setting, right? Okay. So that is the first stage of the Industrial Revolution. And keep in mind, the whole purpose of this is I want to explain the whole progression of the Industrial Revolution so that you have an idea of how, of how uh, Industrial Revolution had in, a great impact on uh, making it possible to make great amounts of money off of war. And that's going to go a long ways in explaining why wars... Uh, you know, the uh, uh, chief motive for wars was making money, creating wealth. It always has been, but it, it evolved and changed with the Industrial Revolution.